Welcome to your genetically modified dream home by Seymour, 2013. Many people now understand the probable health risks of eating foods that have been tampered with by the process of genetic modification. While it is a global problem of near catastrophic proportions and one that I feel passionately about, it really is simply the tip of an iceberg the size of Antarctica. The trillion dollar industrialized food machine finds new ways every day to slip a fast one past our radar, constantly introducing new and untested products and procedures which could have lasting destructive attributes. While I don't have comprehensive knowledge, every time I dig a little deeper, I'm shocked and horrified. This article assumes that you have a basic grasp of the biotech crisis, beginning with subsidized factory farming and ending with cancer wards loaded to full capacity. Because GMO corn and soy are so cheap to produce, the commodity being set by our corporate government, the raw materials are broken down and made into all kinds of things. The biotech industry is being inserted into every aspect of life. And not only was the research into its safety shabby, but no consent was given by the populations of the world to carry this out. Some examples of modified infiltration are transgenic starches being turned into drywall for construction. Trees are being modified to produce paper, which is ludicrous considering that hemp outperforms even normal trees and has for years. Ink is another product that comes from GMO derivatives, and BT cotton is grown worldwide for the clothing industry. So it is fact and not far-fetched fiction to say that now you can purchase your GMO dream home. You will pay for it with modified money that you carry around in the pockets of your transgenic trousers. And it's safe to suggest that just because we are learning about this now doesn't mean that it hasn't been happening for the past 10 or 15 years. Seems like nowhere is safe from this all-pervading technology. Such realizations are enough to make me want to go live in a cave. This isn't paranoia, it is a reckoning. It feels the same as when I began thinking about those little vitamin gel caps and wondered what they were made of. I started poking around, asking people I considered much more knowledgeable than myself. I soon discovered that yes, farm animals are force-fed GMO corn and the gel caps are made from factory cows. True, some gel caps can be made from corn-based products, but oops, those are modified as well. Only a year later, I've begun to observe the words modified cornstarch on the labels of bottles of supplements, usually the ones produced by the larger corporations. And the EPA and FDA do not require any accountability whatsoever because things like this are not considered food products. Are you angry yet? Keep reading. Keep listening. That BT cotton I mentioned has been a source of death and destruction in India. First, hundreds of thousands of farmers had crop failures and chose to commit suicide rather than lose their family's lands to creditors. Also, their livestock would eat the BT cotton vegetation and fall over dead. This became such a problem that now there are restrictions on how close animals are allowed to approach the fields. BT means Bacillus thuringiensis a naturally occurring bacteria that kills insects. Monsanto and other biotech corporations inserted this BT gene into their cotton and other seed crops, which is effective in killing pests that try to consume it while it grows. This is why the livestock fell over dead, and it's also why I have a strong desire not to wear the clothing made from it. Not only would that put money into the industry that produces it, thus perpetuating the problem, but human skin is an organ, one that absorbs from everything it interacts with. I don't want to wear a chemical that causes the stomachs of the bugs that eat it to explode. Um, 
Did I mention that they make a BT soy as well? Yikes. GMO trees aren't talked about very much. Everyone I know is just worried about keeping healthy food on the table and getting their kids off modified candy and other snack food. But GMO trees are a problem because, in essence, they transform a forest into a desert. And they do that in just a few generations of trees. A paper company can purchase or even lease a parcel of woodland and just by injecting some genetic cocktail into the trunk, create a modification that has never existed before in nature. Usually, the modification is to make it grow really fast, or without whatever chemical the paper producers find tedious to their production. I don't even have the time or energy to research and report on the risks to human health and safety. But desertification is not the future I want to see happen to the world. <laughs> also, one genetic trait in R&D at biotech labs is aluminum-resistant seed technology, which hopes to combat the heavy metals now being found in soil around the world. This alone has staggering implications, for that would mean no trees can grow except the engineered ones. So how about the harmless and unobserved things that we frequently come into contact with? One clear example of this is the adhesive applied to every single toilet paper roll. I'm now grossed out each time I pull out a new one, not by the act of defecating, but by the prospect of putting a modified product on my bottom. My temporary solution for this is to unwrap several layers and make certain my butt never contacts any GMOs. Totally serious here. <laughs> yes, I try to use this for something else and not simply waste the toilet paper, but this is important to me. Paper towels also have this corn-based adhesive. Unregulated and everywhere, the gummy transgenic crap holds plastic wrappers together, gets licked on mailing envelopes, and even keeps certified organic labels stuck to their cans. We need to call it out, because our GMO culture is out of control. My own personal suspicion is that when the rest of the world discovers how truly sinister these products are, and how widespread they have become, that the North American continent will be quarantined. All it would take is having the other countries of Earth to mutually decide that no commerce comes and goes to or from America or Canada. Worst case would be if people are quarantined as well, having been polluted by consumption as well as contact. Yes, this last idea of North America under a global quarantine is purely hypothesis. But if I am capable of thinking of it, I cannot be the only person. We need to all begin addressing these issues before anything like this ever began to occur. Dialogue and discussion can help us create innovative solutions. It's obvious that the trillion dollar global food industry is only interested in making more dollars, not in helping global starvation or even growing food in sustainable ways. So let us all look very closely at the world around us and take drastic measures to end this biotechnological crisis. Unless you want to go live in your very own GMO dream home, I promise you, it will be a short, fat life.